Hello, and welcome to another episode of Actor Talk. In this week's episode, I'm going to be giving you tips on how to prepare for auditions, so keep watching. Auditions are one of the most daunting tasks that an actor does. It is also one of the least enjoyable tasks for an actor. However, it is one of the most important aspects of the work, besides training, because it's what you'll spend a majority of your time doing. What I want to do is give you five preparation techniques for auditions that you can use in your own preparation and help you start giving outstanding auditions. So when you're auditioning for film, TV, or theater, you're given something called sides. Sides are simply a small section of the script of the film or play that you are auditioning for. Now, one of the main things that a lot of actors do when they first receive their sides or their script in general is they start memorizing the lines right away or start highlighting their lines. And while memorizing your lines for an audition is important and really a good idea to do, it's not the first thing you should be doing. So here's what you should do. First, you should read through the script through the sides a couple times to get familiar with what's going on in the story. So the first thing you want to do after you've read through the scene a couple times is to write the scene out by hand. There are two reasons for this. The first reason is it actually helps you memorize the lines faster because something about writing out the lines by hand actually gives you a better connection to the text. Second, writing the scene out by hand helps you avoid many common pitfalls that you run into such as giving line readings where you say each line a specific way because of the punctuation that's there. So what I do for a scene and also just for my script in general is I write it out by hand and I leave out the punctuation, I leave out the capitalization, and I leave out the stage direction. Honestly, stage direction isn't that important in your audition. What is more important is being truthful in the scene with you, the person you're reading with, as well as l responding truthfully. And all too often, we get so caught up with our stage direction and how the script says we're supposed to respond that we stop paying attention to the person we're reading with and we become very robotic and very dull and very much like everyone else that's been in the room before you and like everyone that'll be in the room after you. What you wanna give is you wanna give an authentic performance in your audition where they see a real person in front of them experiencing something, not the, the actor saying the same lines, doing the same actions as the previous actors. They want to see you make a connection with the reader. They want to see you living it. So that's what you're really going for. And by taking out the punctuation, stage direction, and capitalization when you write it out, it's going to free you up to be able to respond truthfully and not say the lines in a specific way or do the specific actions that are called for in the script. So one quick thing about memorizing. When you memorize a script either for acting in a film or a play or for auditions like in this case, you want to memorize by rote. Memorizing by rote means that you don't do it with any specific inflection. You do it monotone and monosyllabic. So every single word is on the same exact pitch, musical pitch, and every single word is the exact same length. Every syllable is given the exact same length. And the reason for this is it keeps you from saying the lines in a certain way and building that in when you practice it. So that way, when the lines come out of you, when you're responding truthfully and really listening to the reader, you will actually give you will actually say the words however they come out in that moment and it'll be as truthful as it can possibly be. Second, you want to figure out what the emotional state of the character is at the top of the scene. When the scene opens, are you upset? Are you furious? Are you in love? Are you in pain? What's the emotion that you're feeling right at the top of the scene when it starts? Knowing this is important because if there's one thing you don't want in an audition is to be emotionally dry. And by emotionally dry, I mean there's no real emotion going on. You're just kind of blah. You're just kind of there. You have to have a really strong emotion coming into the scene. So you want to have a very vibrant, rich emotional life throughout the scene. And that all starts with what is your emotion when you first walk on? 
or when the scene opens. Most of the time, you can figure that out just by reading the text and the context of what's being said. A lot of times, too, that comes from the stage direction. It'll tell you that he comes in upset or he's crying or, or whatever the emotion is. Oftentimes, it'll be there. But if it's not there, like I said, you can usually find that out through the text and you can kind of infer that and make a choice based off of that. To understand how to create the emotion truthfully for the scene, check out my previous videos on creating emotion. The third thing you wanna do is figure out what it is you're doing to the other person in the scene. Are you intimidating them? Are you proving them wrong? Are you manipulating them? There are so many verbs that you can use to describe what it is you're doing to the other person. Knowing what it is that you're doing to the other person will give you something solid to work with rather than just saying the lines and will give your character a very clear direction. And the casting director, whoever's watching it, will see that and pick up on that. And it'll be very subtle, it'll be the subtext really of the scene, but they'll pick up on that and see that there's something going on with you that you're trying to do something. And that'll make your audition stand out a lot because a lot of people go into auditions and all they do is say the lines, act like as if there's some emotion going on and that's about it. But if you can figure out what you're doing to the other person in the scene and really do it, you're gonna all of a sudden take your audition from being here to being way up here. So how do you find out what you're doing? It's from reading the text. Reading the words will oftentimes give you quite clearly, but sometimes more subtly, and you kind of have to dig into it a little bit to, and figure out what's going on. But by reading the text, you can figure out what it is you're doing to the other person in the scene. So read the text, read your lines, and you can figure out what it is you're doing to the other person and then do it. Now, there may be places in the scene where what you're doing to the person changes. We call changes in what you're doing in a scene beats. So what you want to do in addition to finding what you're doing, you want to see if you're doing changes at all in the scene. If it's a really well written scene and a well selected audition scene, there will probably be an emotional change at some point and there will also be a change in what you're doing to the other person. That's quite common, especially if you're auditioning for lead or major supporting roles. Then what you wanna do is you wanna personalize the doing. I will do another video in the future on how to personalize the doing so that way it's living in you when you're doing the audition scene. But I'll just say for now, you wanna figure out what your character's doing and do it. The fourth thing you should be doing in every audition is really listening to the reader. Listening is key to giving a really good audition because if you're not listening, you're gonna be missing out on the other person's behavior and you're gonna miss key opportunities for your character, for you as the auditionee, to have some real genuine moments, genuine reactions to what you're getting from the other person. Too often we try to create our own reactions to things and a lot of that comes from the stage direction and it's very false. So if I'm supposed to be surprised at something in the script and I'm following that to the letter, I may do something like, and it comes across very fake, very put on indicative acting, which I hate, rather than really listening to them, reacting to what they're giving you, really listening to the words, listening to their behavior, and then letting that affect you. And when that happens, you will have genuine responses that you can't even help. And they may be very subtle, which is awesome for film acting. But even in a theater audition, the subtlety of it will be magnified by the truthfulness of it. So what you wanna do is you wanna know your lines really, really well, as best as you can for the audition, depending on how much advanced notice you get for the audition, that can be difficult, but do your best to memorize so that way you can be really listening and have your attention on them. Even if the reader is very dull and boring because they've been doing this for the last two hours, still really listen because you can, you can get things from even just the words they're saying by really listening to the words. But what you want to do is you want to be really listening and not in your head thinking about your next line. That's why I recommend you carry your script with you into the audition. You don't want to be staring at it. Definitely don't be looking at it while they're talking to you. 
What I recommend you do is I recommend that you look at them when they're talking to you, really listen to them, observe their behavior, let it affect you. When they stop talking, you know it's your time for your next line. Look down, get the line, and then look at them and say the line. They're not gonna deduct points as it were if you look down at your script for a second, a beat, and then look back and then say your line. They're, they're not gonna worry about that at all. Just don't go out of the moment. Don't be listening to them and then they finish their line and you're like, and then go back into character. Instead, stay in character the whole time, get your line, and then deliver it. And putting all of your attention on the reader, their behavior, will actually help make you less self-conscious, therefore less nervous, and you're less likely to mess up. You'll feel more comfortable because you forget about the other people in the room. Quick story, when I first started taking acting lessons, I was really nervous. But once I learned to put my attention on my scene partner, and I did that, I forgot there were 12, 15 other people in the room, and I did a way better job in the scenes I was doing or in the exercises I was doing because I was so focused on what my scene partner was doing and how they were behaving towards me and letting that affect me and responding truthfully that I forgot about the people watching me. I wasn't even consciously aware of them being there. So by doing that, by putting all your attention on your scene partner, really listening to them, will actually help you to be calm, take your attention off of yourself and be less nervous and not mess up. And the fifth thing you should be doing, and I alluded to it a moment ago with the fourth, is to respond truthfully. Responding truthfully is one of the big reasons why I tell you to not include stage direction when you write out the scene. And don't worry too much about the stage direction if you don't listen to what I said earlier and you don't write out the scene, but rather you just read from the actual script you were given forget about the stage direction because the stage direction will make you start thinking, oh, I've got to respond this way. I got to move here. I got to move there. And then guess what? You become a cookie cutter actor. You do the same thing every other single actor does. When the script says that you look away, you look away. When the script says you stand up, you stand up. When other things are listed in the script as far as stage direction goes and you do them, nine times out of 10, every other actor is going to be doing the same thing because they are attached to the script, they feel like that's what the director's looking for. I'm telling you, don't do that. I'm telling you to respond truthfully. If you feel like standing up and the script doesn't say to stand up, stand up if you feel like doing that. If all of a sudden the moment you wanna slam your fist down, but the script gives no indication of that, still slam your fist down if that's what you feel like doing in the moment. Responding truthfully will give you a much more realistic, real life behavior. It'll make you real, it'll make you vulnerable and by doing that the casting directors will see a real person in front of them not an actor doing the lines and doing everything that's listed in the script you will actually stand out in your auditions because you're being truthful you're being honest and that's what we're looking for so to recap after you read the scene several times write the script out by hand without capitalization punctuation or stage direction Find what your character's emotional state is at the top of the scene and prepare that. Also look for emotional changes. Find what your character is doing to the other character in the scene and see if that changes anywhere. Really listen and respond truthfully. If you do those five things, you will already be way ahead of the competition and be giving stellar auditions if you do that work. And these are things that you can do if you even have 24 hours notice or less for an audition. It just means you have to spend more time working on it, but you can do it. If you put the work in, if you do these five things, make it a habit to do those, you will see great increases in your auditions, in your callbacks, and even booking roles. So try them out, see how they work, and let me know in the comments below how they work for you. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful and enjoyable. Be sure to like and subscribe to my channel and click the bell to be notified when new content comes out. Also, be sure to share this video so other actors can benefit from these tips. Thanks again, and as always, keep living truthfully.